That's me, Lance. I tie flies and am the creator of this channel. Today I'm tying an atomic nymph, a super bright, heavy pattern meant to attract fish and keep trailing flies down in the water column. If you are new to my channel or are a fly junkie like me, click subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be alerted to new videos on my channel. That's me, and this is my vice. This atomic nymph uses a size 12 TMC5262 that has a 1 8 inch bead on it, which is placed into the device's jaws. Wrap about a dozen wraps of .020 lead wire around the shank to help weight the fly, and break or cut the excess lead from the fly. Next, start a bobbin of black UTC-140 behind the lead wire. Once it is secured to the shank, cut the tag from the fly and then continue wrapping the thread around the shank and to the bend of the hook. Pull about a dozen pheasant tail fibers from a pheasant tail feather and measure them approximately half a shank long. Tie these pheasant tail fibers to the fly with wraps of thread up the shank to behind the lead wire. Here I use the index finger of my material hand to help keep the pheasant fibers on top of the shank by placing it against the tail fibers and the far side of the hook as I wrap the thread to behind the lead wire. Then with a pair of scissors cut the butts of the pheasant fibers away from the hook at the shank. After the butts of the pheasant fibers have been cut from the shank, cut a few inches of copper brassy ultra wire from a spool. Then place the wire against the shank and wrap a couple light wraps of thread around it and the hook and then carefully pull the wire from the back of the fly until the tip sits just behind the lead wire. Once the wire has been secured to the hook, continue tying it to the shank with tight wraps of thread until it reaches the bend of the hook and then bring the thread back to just behind the lead wire. Now cut a strand of 1 16th inch coral atomic glow to a point. Then place the point against the back of the lead wire on the near side of the hook and secure the strand to the shank with wraps of thread. Continue securing the strand to the shank until the thread reaches the bend of the hook. This next part is the reason for using UTC-140 rather than UTC-70 for this part of the fly. UTC-140 makes light work of making tapered thread bodies. So wrap the thread up the shank over the lead wire and to somewhere behind the bead and then bring it back down to almost a bend. Then bring the thread back up to around the bead and back down the shank but not quite as far as the last series of wraps. Continue wrapping the thread around the hook in this fashion to build a taper to the fly. After the tapered body has been completed, the thread should be hanging behind the bead where a whip finish needs to be thrown on the fly. After the UTC-140 has been cut from the fly, start a bobbin of black UTC-70 behind the bead. Once the thread has been secured to the fly, cut the tag and put a half hitch with the thread on the hook and place the bobbin in the bobbin cradle. Then using the rotary function of the vise, rotate the fly and wrap the atomic glow up the shank so that each wrap of atomic glow slightly overlaps the previous wrap. When the atomic glow reaches about an eye length behind the bead, Take the bobbin from the cradle and tie off the atomic glow with tight wraps of thread and then cut the excess atomic glow from the fly. After the excess atomic glow has been removed from the fly, throw another half hitch of thread on the fly and put the bobbin back in the cradle. And again, using the rotary function of the vise, rotate the fly, but this time, Rotate it the opposite direction the atomic glow is rotated on the fly. And wrap the rib on the fly with seven or eight evenly spaced wraps of wire on the fly. Rotating the fly in the opposite direction from the atomic glow counter wraps the ribbing around the atomic glow and thereby, hopefully, making the atomic nymph more durable. When the ribbing reaches behind the bead, take the bobbin from the cradle and using a few tight wraps of thread, tie off the ribbing. Then pull down on the bobbin with your material hand and helicopter the excess wire with your bobbin hand until the wire breaks free from the thread wraps. Now bring the thread down the fly until it is about 40% of the way down from the shank between the back of the bead and the bend of the hook. 
Then cut a couple inches of large Mirage opal tinsel from a spool. Center this strand along the top of the shank and tie it down with a couple light wraps of thread and then gently pull the strand from behind until the tip sits just behind the bead. Once the tip is sitting just behind the bead, continue lashing the tinsel to the hook with thread to the bead. Then bring the thread back to where the tinsel was tied in. To create the thorax of the atomic nymph, take a bit of pheasant tail ice dub from a container and twist it to the thread. Wrap the small dubbing noodle that was just created up to the shank until there is no more dub thread. Repeat this process over and over until a somewhat robust ball of dubbing has been wrapped on the fly. After the thorax has been created, pull the mirage tinsel over the top of the fly and using the index finger of your material hand, press the tinsel to the thorax as thread is wrapped around the tinsel and the fly. Once the wing case has been tied down, cut the excess tinsel from the fly as close to the fly as possible without cutting the thread. Then pull a dozen fibers off a of pheasant tail and measure them to the shank so that when laid flat, the tips sit just above the hook point. Pinch these fibers to the near side of the hook and with a couple tight wraps of thread, secure the legs to the fly. Repeat this for the far side legs of the atomic nymph. Now that the legs have been tied in, carefully cut the butt ends of the pheasant tail fibers from the fly. Then make a small head of thread on the fly. Using a bodkin, apply a bit of head cement to the thread, and throw two three-turn whip finishes to the fly, then cut the thread. After the thread has been cut from the fly, put a bit of thick, clear cure goo on a bodkin and cover the wing case with the glue. Then shine a UV light on the fly to cure it. Because the thick UV glue dries sticky, coat it with a coat of clear cure goo hydro and blast it with the light as well. This overcoat of clear cure goo hydro dries without the stickiness. This is an atomic nymph. The Atomic Nymph is a cool pattern that utilizes a unique material called Atomic Glow, which glows in the dark once it has been exposed to UV light. The pattern itself was designed to be heavy and to attract the fish's attention enough to provoke them to strike, or so that their sight would be guided to see the smaller, more natural fly behind it, and then choose to eat the more natural fly. If you enjoyed this demonstration of the Atomic Nymph and want to watch me tie other flies, be sure to check out my tying demos playlist to the top right, or you can choose to watch my most recent upload below that. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to like Fishbait's Flybox on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Now go feed your vice.